the country that will pay the biggest price is always Israel. So we want a diplomatic solution, but a good one, one that rolls back Iran's inf uh, nuclear infrastructure and one that ties the final lifting of restrictions on Iran's nuclear program with the change of Iran's behavior, namely that they stop their aggression in the region, mm -hmm. that they stop their worldwide terrorism, and that they stop calling and working for the annihilation of Israel. Hey, we welcome you back to America's Forum. Right there you saw Benjamin Netanyahu. I'm John Bachman filling in for J.D. Hayworth. Netanyahu calling for the U.S. to force Iran to recognize Israel's right to exist before any deal is made for the president. There were just three uh, concessions that Netanyahu wanted, but President Obama is firing back. Take a listen. The, the notion that we would condition Iran not getting nuclear weapons in a verifiable deal on uh, Iran recognizing Israel is really akin to saying that uh, we won't sign a deal unless uh, the nature of the Iranian regime completely transforms. And that is, I think, a fundamental misjudgment. That may be the case, but a lot of folks are concerned about the president's word as the tumultuous relationship between Obama and Netanyahu continues to unfold. American Jews are rethinking their loyalty to the Democratic Party. Some are anyway. And joining us now for more on this conversation, guys with a lot of political knowledge in an area where this comes into play, and that is South Florida. Uh, state, uh, state Attorney Dave Ehrenberg and also Sid Dinnerstein, former chairman of the Palm Beach County Republican Party, and a guy who every candidate will shake his hand when they come into Palm Beach County, and all of <laughs> them will. they got to meet Sid. Well, let's start with you, Dave. You're a Democrat. Um, and you know the issue. There is a, uh, a mindset of the South Florida voter, and, and Israel is definitely in the forefront of the mind of those voters here. We heard the president saying this where Iran does not have to recognize Israel's right to exist. Essentially, that's what he's saying. Do you think this would hurt other Democrats who, who come down to Florida and try to win this vote down here? Well, the voters down here have been overwhelmingly supportive, the Jewish voters, of Democratic candidates. And it's whether... And that was, but that was before yeah, this that's deal. That's right. That, that's right. But, you know, you saw just in the run-up to this segment, you saw uh, Senator Charles Schumer has said... Congress should have a say in this. And so there is a prominent Democratic Jewish leader. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I don't think this is going to have a major impact on the Jewish vote, especially if Congress has a say in whether or not this deal goes forward. And we heard, we heard Chuck Schumer making that announcement. And we heard uh, Senator Mike Lee, who was with us here earlier, saying that he believes, Sid, that there are close to 13 Democrats in the U.S. Senate to join with Republicans to block this deal potentially. Do you think he is correct? No, not a chance. This, this, um, the threat to Israel will change no liberal Jewish Democratic votes. And why not? Um, because they're Democrats long before they're Jews. It's a very sad situation that we've gotten to. You will not see the Jewish leaders of Palm Beach County get up and say, we're not supporting any Democrat currently or in the future who won't condition a nuclear Iran on the recognition of Israel's right to exist. All the votes that the Republican Party or the right will get from the Jewish community, we already got in 2012. We got in the low 30s. That's the high water mark. It is so sad to watch the Jewish community allow Israel to be the 21st century Czechoslovakia, which is what the Obama deal is all about. And uh, you can sum up the Republican position which I wish would someday be the democratic position, in three words, Jewish lives matter. Well, nobody is debating that, but Dave, I wanted to get your take if you think Sid's assessment is correct. No, I totally disagree, and I don't have a cool prop like Sid does to uh, enunciate my point, but keep in mind, you know, put it, this whole thing about uh, putting party over our faith is, is ridiculous. And, you know, no one accused uh, Republicans of putting the party above their faith when they supported Ronald Reagan when he sold AWACS jets to Saudi Arabia or George Sr. Bush when he conditioned loan guarantees on Israeli pulling out of their, Israel pulling out of their settlements or George uh, 43 Bush when he allowed Iran to go from zero to 7,000 uh, of the uh, centrifugal uh, units. You know, this is something that has been a bipartisan issue over the years. Democrats and Republicans alike have always supported Israel. And even pr uh, Prime Minister Netanyahu said in his speech to Congress that President Obama has been a good friend, mentioning the Iron Dome has, system. He has to, well, that's true. The Iron right? Dome system definitely exists. But you can definitely feel, you don't have to be inside the relationship in the meeting between these two to know that there's uh, some 
some static. There's definitely static. And, you know, there's, it's, it's not new to have static amongst the top leaders. Remember, it was in the Bush senior administration where James Baker said that horrific comment about the Jews. You remember, and I know Sid knows it, which I can't say here on a family show like this. But that wasn't, then after that, we didn't hear, well, you know, Republicans are putting their party over their faith. I mean, that's ridiculous. How much does this have to do? Well, we got to run, gentlemen. We're going to continue this conversation. I see we got to take a short commercial break, but a good start to our debate here. And we'll have more to talk about this. I do want to talk about if we're making this too much about faith and not enough about national security when we look at the Iran deal. We'll be back with more here on America's Forum. Sid Dinnerstein and Dave Ehrenberg, both here talking about this issue. I'm going to vote Democrat unless the Democratic candidate uh, has issues on foreign policy which are incompatible with my own. Uh, I think any voter should keep an open mind today. Certainly pro-Israel voters have to keep an open mind. They have to persuade us that uh, the interests that we care about, that is American foreign policy, what's good for America, what's good for peace, what's good for the world, what's good for Israel, we have to be persuaded as to which party and which candidate best supports those pro-American values. So there you have a well-known Democrat like Alan Dershowitz saying his vote might be up for grabs, a former Harvard Law professor and prominent Democrat saying if foreign policy does become an issue in 2016, again, he is considering voting Republican. Welcome back to America's Forum. John Bachman here alongside Palm Beach County State Attorney Dave Ehrenberg, also Sid Dinnerstein, the former chairman of the Palm Beach County Republican Party. Gentlemen, it's great to have you back both with us here. I want to put up a poll real quickly that we have that shows the trend line here, according to Gallup, uh, about the notions of, of Jewish voters. You see back in, 19, in 2008, 71% voting Democrat. It's fallen down in 2014 to 61%. That's 10 points. That's a huge shift. Back in 2008, support among Republican uh, Jewish voters, or for support for the Republicans, 22% rising to 29%. So that gives us some light on what we were talking about earlier. What do you think, you know, this is going back all the way to 2008 when this started. What do you think has been the biggest change other than the guy in the White House. It, oh, no, no, it is. It, it, that's it's it, almost, just him. Well, it's not just the guy in the White House, but the guy in the White House, uh, it, it's important. This is a man whose number one spiritual advisor in the past was Reverend Wright, and his number one spiritual advisor currently is Al Sharpton. These are avowed, open anti-Semites. That's not me saying it, that's them saying it. This is a man whose influence um, from Davis the communist, not because the guy was a communist, because he was an anti-Semite. William Ayers the terrorist, not because he was a terrorist, because he's an anti-Semite. The other point that goes with this, if instead of Iran saying they're going to annihilate Israel, what if they said they were going to annihilate Ireland or Kenya or any nation that Well, they say that death to the United States all the time. Or, yes, but that's different. But any nation that had an ethnic group that wasn't Jewish, these talks could have never taken place. Dave? Why? Because the president does not believe in a, in a reference to that uh, Jewish lives matter. Ferguson, Missouri there, David, I want to give you a chance to, to answer that. Well, you know, I, I couldn't disagree more with my friend Sid. You know, in the last year, under President Obama, the United States has given more to Israel for Israel's security than in any other year in the history of either nation. So that's a far cry from comparing Israel to Czechoslovakia. It's just the, the facts are just different. At a time when Israel is under more stress and danger from perhaps Well, actually, the Czechoslovakia analogy is a very important one. Czechoslovakia was the throw-in, if everybody remembers, for peace in our time. Israel is the throw-in for Iran to become... I don't know what but, they're supposed to be. But that is not a widely held political opinion in any, any party. It is, in, it is on the right. And it, would, and it should be in the Jewish community, and it isn't. And that's what we're here to talk about today. Dave? You know, I, you know in, in the past, you've seen a bipartisan um, unity in, in support of Israel. And that has been frayed recently because Speaker Boehner invites Prime Minister Netanyahu to speak to Congress without even asking or mentioning it to the White House. And so, you know, there is definitely a wedge trying to be drawn. I don't think it's good for Israel. I don't think Israel is like... Uh, a regular issue out there. It's not like any other typical issue that has been uh, destroyed by Congress in their, their, their horrific partisan manner. You have Israel, which is something that should be bipartisan. And all this hyperbole out there isn't helping matters. I mean, we should come together to make sure that any deal is best for Israeli security and the interests of the United States. And this whole hyperbole that Obama doesn't like Jews and all this stuff is just, it doesn't help things. He did have Rahm Emanuel as his first chief of staff. 
Yes, and he surrounds himself with, with, let's just call them compliant Jews. But that's my point, is that two-thirds of the Jews in America put the Democratic Party way ahead of Israel or Judaism, and that's why Israel's at risk. If it was another group, if we were talking about people bombing the Vatican, the Italians immediately would oppose the administration. There's no question about it. It's only the Jews that, that, are, that put being a Democrat ahead of being a Jew. Things are, things are certainly changing, and we noticed that based on this poll. But so what do, you, do you think this changes with the change in leadership in the White House, even if it is Hillary Clinton who gets elected? No, I think Hillary will sign on to the same Iran deal, and she'll get so. the same high 60s that Obama got in his second term. By the second term of Obama, none of the Jewish people were fooled anymore. The first term, nobody knew what he was. By the second term, the idea of him liking Jewish people was you couldn't fool anybody. So, so we reached a high watermark of the low 30s because he's no longer, you know, somebody that Jewish uh, people. All right, I want to give with. I want to give Dave the last word because we got 30 seconds left. Dave, go ahead. Well, the Iron Dome missile defense system, which has saved thousands of lives in Israel, was funded in large part by the United States. President Obama, this administration, the United States have been friends of Israel, good friends of Israel. The facts speak differently than the hyperbole you see on the other side, and I just hope we can all work together to protect Israel's security going forward. And folks, what you just saw there is a preview of the debate that's going to happen in 2016 when the, when the campaign focuses on the state of Florida, one of a few that are in play. Thanks very much for being here, gentlemen. We're back with more on America's Forum right after this.